Awesome. Let's begin with the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we welcome everybody to this special meeting, the Marion County Commission, on February 15th. Uh, the item for discussion today will be uh, the proposed proposal review for contractor CMR, CMAR selection on the Health Department building project. So, uh, Kobe, if you'd like to come up, uh, you and Tina have had a chance to review the applications along with the architect. Give us a summary of uh, what you saw, uh, four proposals, I believe, yes. and uh, kind of give us a summary of where we stand with those proposals. I believe um, of the... Um folks that actually uh, provided the proposals. There was four very, very good proposals mm -hmm. submitted um, from, you know, qualified uh, companies as well. Yes. Um, each one of them having their strengths and weaknesses, and we've obviously uh, kind of done some evaluation of this at this point. Um, and, you know, each one and stuff too, um, you know, has their merits uh, as we've talked. Um, some uh, have um, some merits and stuff too based off of logistics. Some have merits based off of experience and obviously the um, you know, longevity of certain companies. Um, I think you have four companies right now that are all very capable of completing the project. Um, some have a little bit more experience than others in the specific type of project that this is, um, as opposed to just a building in general for general office use, since this is surrounded more of on the health side. So I think that that obviously weighs in uh, certain, uh, certain favors of certain parties. So um, yeah, obviously we can get into um, as much detail as we need to granular, um, but at this point I think you've got four um, pretty good options either way, um, and we can drill down on that as much as you need to. Okay. So from there. Uh, commissioners have specific questions that you'd like to raise or ask? Just in generalities and looking at the four proposals, uh, two of them stood out to me. Um, the one uh, law obviously is working on two projects here in Marion currently uh, with the school and the hospital um, and it was very competitive on their numbers. Uh, the other one was Nelson Fowles of course right here in Marion again, local firm we've had experience with, very competitive on, on their prices. Um, would it maybe be appropriate to narrow down our our choices. Uh, were there strengths in the other two that you think would elevate to the top two? Um, in my personal opinion, yes. um, probably not over those because both of those, um, the first one you mentioned with law, um, they obviously are one of the best in the state. Um, no question about that from a general contracting perspective. Mm -hmm. Years of experience, successful in all uh, disciplines and all markets. Um, <coughs> and so they would definitely do a good job for sure. Um, with uh, uh, NF's um, experience with county operations and successful uh, ability to um, turn over um, county projects uh, in past years. They've done a great job on that too, and plus proximity um, to the area and understanding. I mean, they also have a pretty good um, track record and definitely would be a, a top tier candidate. Um, the other two, um, I'm familiar as well um, with um, the organizations, uh, one a little bit more than the other. Um, I'm not sure if uh, the other two would uh, surpass um, the weighted calculations of the two that we've already referenced at this point enough to it would uh, sway them to be maybe the top selected at this point and just my evaluation. Um, so again, you hit on some of the key points of the two companies already. <coughs> again, the, um, the other ones that were referenced um, to, um, they both have capabilities as well to complete these projects and both have track records as well in the specific vertical of the health department style of um, uh, rules. But uh, we would just need to kind of determine if we want to shrink those down to maybe a couple of, of those options and we can definitely do that as needed. So. Bottom line is price. Mm -hmm. The top two candidates, Law and Nelson Powell's. What's the price? Top two were were Forge and Law. A specific by. So there is one that was that it was a lower ranking numerically, basically. Yes. 
So you could potentially rule that one out. Yeah, your, your bottom one on the scoring system that we use definitely is, you know, could be one that I probably wouldn't take, obviously, at this point. Um, the uh, the other three, obviously, as Commissioner uh, referenced, uh, two would probably be your, your top three um, of those. Okay, so we can eliminate the, uh, what was the name of the, the bottom one? Um, icon. Or, oh, icon. 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 Do we have a consensus to eliminate, take that one off the table? I have a question on the, uh, is it something about pricing? Is the labor people, are they charged from when they leave Wichita to the, are they on the clock till they get here? Then, they, then they're back home by five o'clock? Uh, that, that, in my perspective, in my history, just depends on the job and depends on the contractor of how they're I mean, putting I, their package I in. I just notice always to work the hospital, yeah. they don't show up till around nine o'clock and at three o'clock they're gone. Yeah. It, it yeah it just and I assume it's because they get paid by the hour so they got two hours of windshield time sure depending on if they parachute them in to the, and logistically try to you know throughout the project stay in town for four tens or whatever they're going to run their schedule and the labors is usually half the cost of the project sure and, and it can extrapolate out there's um, there's uh, obviously without the uh, full extrapolation to GMP at this yeah, point. Don't, we don't yeah. quite know the uh, devil in the details just yet, mm -hmm. um, but from the precursor um, numbers, I mean, there's definitely um, a disparity between um, three of the four cost-wise. You know, the fourth one definitely is um, low, and obviously lowest doesn't always mean best, you know, yeah. uh, in certain things. Um, you know, there's there's got to be a guarantee of performance. Obviously, the bonding will secure some of that. Um, but, yeah, those are, those are valuable points, so. And, and keep in mind that this is just, um, you know, we don't know the final price yet because they don't have to submit their management percentage until after we select them. We're looking at, trying to look at, I mean, the price that's listed is, is something that we are evaluating, but it's not the full price at this point either. Just keep that in mind. Because of the structure. Okay. And <clears throat> I throw it in. I've worked with all three of them. And out of two of them, there's always a super by, uh, superintendent on the job. And the third one is hit and miss. So that's got to weigh in too. If you want to actually pay for a CMR, AR, you want them on site, whether or not they're traveling from Wichita or Kansas City you want them to be in your back pocket to watch the job, make sure they're keeping the job on track and, and providing the subs, the domino effect that's needed to make sure it gets completed on time. All right. So at this point, are we, <laughs> we've kind of gone around in a circle. Um, are we, are we do three finalists then? Law, Forge, and Nelson Fowles, is that what I'm hearing? I would, I would believe that that's the case, yes. Okay. Okay, let's look at the, the strengths and the weaknesses of each of those three finalists then. Uh, let's start with Forge. Um, I think Commissioner Gehring had some comments on Forge. Yeah, Forge is, uh, actually they've done one of these clinics, pretty well the same thing in St. Joe, and I think they're doing another one in Kansas City. And it, they're, they're hitting this market for these smaller health clinics. Um, I think Law Company is doing a, another, uh, they're hitting the clinics, they're hitting uh, certain remods of hospital facilities, but not full on. So I don't think either one is too big for this project. Um, I, I, I see the value and the strengths in that kind of thing because they know from past experiences what, hey, you're not looking here, we need this. You know, this other place did this. You could probably benefit by doing that also. There's a lot of strengths that come with them <clears throat> doing those types of jobs. 
don't they have to follow Alloy's architect? I mean, I mean isn't this all already yeah. kind of decided? Yeah, by having by having them a in certain play. cabinet, yeah. in a certain place, and yeah. certain heights, and sure. And, and there is a lot of the obviously experience and stuff too does come into play a little bit for the nuances in between the two dimensions, you know, on the papers. Um, and but they would be obviously held to account for whatever's in the AIA specs at that point to fulfill um, through any of the parties. Um, to the commissioner's point, um, you know, as take even the law company for sure. I mean, they are who they are. I mean, they're the yeah. They're an 800 pound gorilla in the state. They're they're vetted and you know yeah. extremely uh, qualified okay. for sure. Ten, ten projects going on there. Yeah. yeah, and so obviously they have a footprint here. You know for recent projects as well, um, to the other standards and stuff too. If you know Forge is really going after that market and great, and if they have a successful track record, obviously too, then you know that can weigh positives. Um, and then obviously to NF, I mean it's uh, kind of more of the local commitment as well uh, in the community. And you know the, um, you know definitely being able to have the architectural, um, not only design but also the uh, um, oversight potential as well too from that, um, to be able to um, make sure that any of the three of them come out to the conclusion we want either way. So, and I think at this point you're down to three that would accomplish it. We just have to determine who we really want to um, partner with on this one for this particular project. So. I think all things all things considered, if you're telling us they're all qualified to do the job, some have a little more strength than others. Sure, but they're all qualified. Yes, yes, and some obviously just well, like anybody. We're dealing with taxpayer money, so don't we take don't we do the one that's least expensive? That's um. You you want a quality project? Yeah, I don't want to spend I'm, the money. I'm, he's already, you don't spend he's already it told us that it's... they're all qualified, so let's don't argue that. <laughs> and we have yeah. to follow the blueprints that the architect gave us. We, oh. Kristen's well, already picked up if, all the colors if we were, and and corporate. So, if, we, if we were going to go that route, then we should have bid it out to multiple generals and just not did the CMAR route. The CMAR route brings you another level of owner um, protections, basically. So it's it 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 is to assist you, and not just hey, here's what it is, says on the plan. If we were going to go that route, we should have bid it out the other way. It would have came in cheaper. You're just taking for granted it would have, right? Typically, uh, yeah. <laughs> Because you would be selecting between five or six total bids, and then that would bring out the competitiveness on on dollars and cents, not percentages. Who would be just selecting? Who would be the overall chooser of the contractor? Okay, so, so we're past that point because yeah. um, you thought. know a few weeks ago we had that conversation about whether the architect just prepares a project bid package and then you uh, you yeah, select in, in in charge of it. the architect would have done all that and that's why we because you decided to go with the CMAR instead that's yeah. why we had to do the RFP and 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 do this process thank you yeah yeah and that's what we were trying to discuss a couple of weeks ago was you know if that's what you want then then we should have done the other route but if we're going to go this route we need to look for quality so a, an analogy that Kobe said earlier, which I thought was interesting, is at this point you're deciding who you want to go to the party with, like who's mm -hmm. taking you to the who you're going yeah. to the dance with. Mm -hmm. You're not you're not deciding all of the details of of the project and like how they're going to do the work. It's basically deciding who you're partnering with for the project. So that's kind of a good way to think about it, I think. So if some of the People's charging four percent. Some charging six percent, two percent. You're telling me, Jonah, that that didn't save us any money, or don't save us any money? It will save you some money, but it's not going to provide staff on site all the time. If you want somebody supervising this thing and looking over it, that's going to come at a cost. And, and I've seen from past projects that some of them provide staff every day of the week. Some of them are hit and miss 
once or twice a week or once a week or once every other week. And the last project, that big one that we did here with was the transfer station and where we missed the boat was on the diagrams. We looked at them but nobody helped us catch it. There was a 2% deflection on the outward side or that the project, we couldn't turn a semi from, they designed it for one way to enter and, to, and go out. They couldn't turn around and, I mean, they couldn't come in from the other way and drive in very easily without some hard work. And so what I'm getting at is we missed it on the blueprints and we didn't seem to have no problems with any of the really construction of it except we hit soil that was no good and stuff like that but we missed it on the blueprints from looking at the blueprints so um, there's not as much possibility in this building's uh, blueprints to, to miss as much for for workability and stuff like that, it's you know I'm I'm just saying that pretty s simple blueprint and stuff. So and we like EMS just, building too. Uh, Did the EMS building in Hillsboro? Yeah, yeah. There another one. It was a uh, simple cool. blueprint, and uh, we did that. I guess I'm two projects back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I, I'm just looking at the cost. Still, we still don't know what the total figure is. That's a big concern. And uh, so, if our cost is 1.5 for a ceiling, where are we going to get to that at real quick, like Jonah, to uh, make that decision whether there's something has to be cut? Choose one of these guys. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I'm. I'm that, uh, yeah, I don't, we got to select somebody and then I don't know. I don't know if there's a, an easy back out at that point. Okay. Um, if we would have went to the, the bid process, yeah. then we could have got all the numbers in front of us and then canceled the project. Um, or not canceled, but <clears throat> went out for rebid after redesign. The, I, I'm, I'm looking at some of the other things on the past projects that you're talking about, and I don't know that constant oversight would have caught the two two percent degree. Um, I think it would have caught the extra insulation charge that five or eight thousand dollars we paid on the EMS building. Um, there's some things there. I mean, but I. I don't know that. I don't know how to answer your question. I guess, Randy. Okay. I, I, okay. I, we gotta we gotta get past this point before we can know that, and I hate that answer. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Well, it's, it's it's in the back of my mind since I started this project. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, was there architectural oversight on those projects as well too? It's it's available. We had an engineer on the transfer station, no architectural oversight, and uh, it was a, I believe the other one was a design build, so no, there was no architectural oversight. <clears throat> Which that may help, you know, if we go that route, then that may help regardless of whoever of the final three um, stay on task and those discussions and dialogue throughout, because ultimately we want a good product delivered at the end. I mean, Commissioner's definitely right on that. Um, we definitely want to make sure that, you know, you know we get what we um, anticipate we're going to get at this meeting level, right? Everything's on blueprints and, you know, concept at this point. And so it does come down to, you know, who are we um, feeling most comfortable with. Price definitely and stuff, too, is a good indicator um, sometimes and stuff. I mean, I think um, two of the three are definitely in line with market standards um, for sure. Um, another one, um, well, that's the lower option and stuff, too, financially going in has... Uh, more of a vested interest, um, I think, you know, at this point. And so there's arguments for both sides of those conversations either way right now. Um, I think if we are um, insured, you know, obviously the bonding's going to ensure a little bit of the performance is completed um, to the spec. 
Um, if we do have architectural oversight, then that will help maybe some of those gaps um, that get omitted throughout a project when it's just initially turned over to full GC supervision um, to be able to uh, discuss those early and keep that, you know, getting to the culmination point without those big, you know, change orders coming in and surprising everybody at the 60 or 70 percent mark in a project, even though this is GMP. So I think that that would still keep everybody in play at this point, unfortunately, of the three of them. And so now it comes down to who are we, who are we most comfortable with? Because I really think um, in the conversation, I mean, like I said, there's, there's one that's extremely qualified um, to the point of, you know, this is a small project, but definitely within the market they're serving um, for them. Um, and so, you know, it would probably have no issue from start to finish. The others definitely would be able to get it too. One may not quite have the experience of the others, but may have a history um, of performance that also weighs into their favor as well too, specific, specifically for the county. So um, I would like to be able to give you a hard and fast, here's my answer, but we're still at the beginning of this, unfortunately, in the process, and it's more of the partnership discussion than it is performance discussion um, at this point. Right. And I, I guess... I'm a little frustrated because it's not an easy decision, but sure. at the same time, it's not an easy, easy decision is good for the county. Correct. Uh, we've got three viable options to go, and so that elevates the, the selection process. We can get a little further into, um, as I said, the relationship. Um, for, me, for me personally, a big part of that is you know, being familiar with Marion County, Marion County needs. Um, with the taxpayer. Uh, and, and, and local taxpayer and the relationship part of it um, as you said the, the analogy was who you're going to go to the dance with well hopefully it's somebody you know sure. um, uh, you have a relationship in place uh, they kind of know how important price is uh, they know how important efficiencies are um, efficiencies say, without shortcuts and still providing the quality product. Correct. Absolutely, that'll yes. be the key. Yes, we st we, we still got to have the quality product, but we got to get there with with any efficiencies we can find. Yes. So. And I just throw in there. I mean, I'm usually the first one to talk about local, and uh, the the working with Forge and Law Company when they're in the area, I see them use a lot of local. Um, so, I mean, they make up for the, the not being local by using a lot of local. So, just making sure I weigh that in there. Comment? Well, I just have one comment. And, um, you know, I know this isn't an easy decision. I think there is one more thing that um, probably needs to be, like, kind of uh, vetted out a little bit by... Uh, staff before the final final decision so um, maybe narrow down a little bit more if you feel comfortable but uh, maybe table till the next meeting if you're if you're not 100% ready to make a decision you know I mean if you are that's fine but um, I kind of have a is there any chance we could invite the top three to uh, do a one on one kind of like an interview process just to familiarize ourselves with their personnel. What would you ask them? There is oh, the opportunity to the experiences, the things we're assu assuming at this point, not just uh, let's get it straight from them. And, and I'm sorry, and to dovetail on that and stuff too, have we done a CMAR process before in recent projects or is this kind of the first first time? Having that time to be able to set the expectation before your final decision with your finalist um, because you're basically committing to kind of an assumed, um, just like Commissioner was saying, um, you would get that opportunity to get your clarifications before you make your final decision um, because you haven't even seen the price yet yeah. at this point. We're just holding up the architect right now. Yeah. He's, he's at a standstill waiting for us. Absolutely. And we don't want to, um, you know, do any scope creep on schedule, of course, but if it's something that could happen, that may be 
something that helps you make your best decision and then help give everybody peace of mind for clarification of the finalist. I don't have no problem with that if that's if you want to do that. I have no problem with that. Okay, target uh, Tuesday the 20th. Or just do the bottom two, you want to do three people. That's commission. Do you want to do three or two? I'd rather just do two, I think. The top two, according to this deal, was Law and Nelson Fowles, right? Nope. Law and Forge. Law and Forge. I must be on a different wrong scale. Yeah. I must, must be on the wrong thing here. So I think if you're going to do interviews and you're two, two three finalists, yeah. that you should do interviews with three. Okay. Um, we can see what we can get arranged for the 20th unless you want to try to shoot for I, I don't see that we're going to be able to turn that around in a day like to try to do it tomorrow but no. No, we're going to have to put it off to the 20th I, I think from what I know of all of them as long as they get noticed I'm sure they can take care of it virtually that's a great option to be able to then compress your schedule back into at least only a, del a day delay I agree. To try to do it yes. tomorrow. If you could, I 100% I agree with that. Um, I, I don't and, think you're going to get any better um, impression okay. in presence versus that to set your expectations. All right. And this is a contractor world, so you you got to be aggressive or you or you die. So I mean that's just the truth of the matter. So I mean they'll they'll either show up or they won't. Nine uh, o'clock tomorrow morning. All right, let's contact the three firms, Nelson Fowles, Law, and Forge, to see if they could be available tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, uh, either in person or virtually. And we stagger those? Yeah, stagger, stagger those. Them. Right. Absolutely. Um, Whatever time. 15 minutes each? 20. We can set a baseline of questions and stuff to you to be able to clarify during that and give them that window. Okay. Well, that's 20 or 30 minutes, wouldn't you? Oh, whatever staff recommends. Yeah, I, think I would leave it with staff. Okay. <laughs> I'm talk, talk 10 minutes on how great they are. <laughs> well, and hopefully we'll, uh, well, hopefully we'll be able to. Obviously, that first impression was their proposal. Right. Um, and, you know, they all, they all, you know, as far as proposals go, I mean, they all presented a, a paper, you know, and right. uh, some have more gloss than the others. But I think right. we can, yeah. yeah, we can uh, we can skip past some of that and kind of prep them right. um, for hey, it's a compressed window. Um, <clears throat> we need to get clarifications to be able to get you at least a better uh, feeling. Specific questions the commission has to tell them ahead of time. We'll leave that to staff too. For questions? Yes. Do you have specific questions that you'd like to have? Have them prepare. You know, I, I've used a different well, scale than what, the what this is for me, so I see some low marks there that I, I don't know. I just well, we'll we'll move forward with the plan to visit with each of them tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. Stagger. Yeah, I think you'll all feel more comfortable if you can. Um, have a face there and, yes. and get some some answers. So nobody has any specific questions. Mm -hmm. my, my question is, which according to Chris, you know, he said that why you have the CMAR is so they hold and hold true to your budget. Mm -hmm. You know that they can't go; they have to eat the cost if they go over the budget, or mm -hmm. and that was the whole purpose of it. So I just want to make sure that there's no hidden. Mm -hmm. somewhere. And that's where I think they put in the the information they already gave us, which is their, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. But. Okay. And so. Okay. And also why they would be the best person pick mm -hmm. for.
I think that'd be more fair yeah, I would, um, to the. But I agree decision. with Krista on that. Yeah. She, I'm pretty sure all of these are going to come in at our whatever limit we set, and that's going to be the guaranteed maximum price. And other ones are going to try to get subs for cheaper, and some are going to get just whatever subs they can, and then they're going to make that percentage fit and hope for the best that they come out with with those earnings. Okay. Well, again, the good news is we had four very good applications and very tough on the final three, but I guess our accomplishment is today we narrowed it down <laughs> one. And and I think it's a very good idea to meet them in person or at least get a face. Especially if this is the first kind of yes. dive into the CMAR, then it'll give you a little bit better clarification before your commitment. Okay. So very good. That's and fine. you really want to work with somebody you can get along with too. So I mean, if if you can't if you can't even get along with them with it the, during the interview, <laughs> you really don't want to do a whole project with them. All right. Anything else? If not, we'll see everybody tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. Yeah. Mr. Dalkey, do you have a? I just, I've just got some business to get okay. on, administrative business to get on with Tina. So, if nothing, for, there's nothing for today. No, okay. nothing for this. If there's nothing else, then I move to adjourn. Second. Second by Commissioner Dalkey. All in favor, say aye. 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 Say nay. Motion carried. Five zero. We are adjourned.